What's up, everyone? Hey, guys. Izzy MJ from Endless RVing. Thanks for joining us today on another live stream. Thanks for coming by. I'm just going to try to straighten out some of these uh, things I have on my screen here. So we are back today. And uh, it is Thursday. It is Thursday for our weekly live stream. I uh, hope we can get a lot of people to join us here. We're going to be talking about some uh, Hi, sweetie. pretty Thank awesome you. stuff today regarding uh, staying connected on the road and how we do that. Uh, it's pretty critical for both of us. Uh, we're just doing a sound check here. Make sure everything sounds good. Everything's looking good. Give us a thumbs up if everything sounds and looks good. Um, so you want to catch everybody up on what we did last weekend? Yeah, so we went to the KOA. We like KOAs, most of them. We just put a video um, two days ago on the Cape May KOA, which was one of our favorites. This one, we went, it was in Platkill, New York. We it's went to Newburgh KOA, right? Yeah, but it's in, yeah, Newburgh KOA. It was in Platkill. And it, um, we went once before and we liked it. We never went on Halloween weekend, though. <laughs> so. Creeps come um, out at night. Yeah, a lot of them. Actually, I think the creeps are there all the time, even not on <laughs> Halloween. But um, so it was insane. If you're a kid, it was awesome because they had it was Halloween weekend, so they had a site decorating contest. I've never seen sites decorated like this. They were oh my god! It was, yeah, they were way into it. Like really, really into it. Like haunted house into it, um, and uh, so. We got to go, you know, Jason went around trick-or-treating, which was really cool. I dressed up. I have this cool, um, it's a, <laughs> it looks like I'm piggybacking on Trump the way it's uh, laid out. So I wore that as he was some freaky, uh, scary. Actually, I think I have I mean, some we, pictures. Yeah, we have guys. pictures. And Jason was a Fortnite character. Uh, I mean, what kid isn't a Fortnite character? So that's, a, it's me and Jason, Yeah, right? there's Jason. He's like a gingerbread guy. From so if you look up over my head and Jason's head, you're going to see like a little bit of a uh, battery operated candle there. That's like a face we had put in. <laughs> That's the creepy clown face we had in the windshield <laughs> of the, uh, of the motor home. But that was nothing compared to what other people had. It was insane. Um, ones. There's Izzy. <laughs> so it was like a two face mask, one in front, one in back. So it was kind of, I neat. didn't make anybody cry though. Unfortunately. No, no. <laughs> I think he gave Jason nightmares, but uh, no. Um, so anyway, so, yeah, that was cool. The problem with this KOA, if you ever do decide to go to the Newburgh KOA, um, there's no rules really that you have to follow. I mean, there are rules, but none of them are followed. It's jailhouse rules. And uh, yeah, so there's there's like a million, um, you know, dogs running off leash. There's there's just there's like eighty people on each site, you know, getting hammered and yeah. and, and just screaming at all hours, and and it's, it was just really not very enjoyable it wasn't very experience. camping it was more like um like a like trailer frater- park like a trailer park party or like something. a frater- yeah or a frat party yeah <laughs> um so anyway so that was that i mean we got away and you know jason had fun trick-or-treating and and you know we always make the best they of can't all be but, tens right they're not all the cake making you know, right? you're gonna sometimes get uh or, get a good one yeah. sometimes you're gonna get a dud but the, the, the thing is they had koa workers riding around um and they weren't doing anything. Like they no. just saw these dogs off leash and it, it was just, hey, you know, cheers with the beer. You know, I think they must have been friends with them. But anyway, um, but like I said, we, we always have fun when we go right. away no matter what. But this is not a place that we would return to. No. I mean, I, unless you like that scene, I don't know. We, we're not really into all that. <laughs> so we got a bunch let's, of people yeah, in the house. Just, let let MJ go through. Uh, go through the iPad. Okay. Hi, Jason. There is our boy. Um, Anna, how are you? Thanks so much for all your questions, Anna. We're, we're happy to help. I know you were asking about the, uh, the radios and stuff. So we're yes. happy to help. Welcome from Tennessee. Um, Sebi Skywalker. Hello, my darling. Um, yes. Hello. Tell her hello. Um, hey, Ron, what's up? Welcome back. It's always nice to see you here. Ron is in every live stream Yes, of ours. Ron, you're, a, you, you are awesome. Is he the one who tells the funny jokes? I think so. Okay. <laughs> sound is good picture is good awesome um okay good so we hit if you, anybody see there's other people here so hey there's blake there he is you almost let me down i was like where's blake, our blake that's the other one's always in blake's always in here <laughs> what's up okay um 
So we got more people coming in too. So yes. if you're there, just shout out, say hi, so we can say hello to you and thank you for being here. I don't think there's anybody new today, but if, if anybody's new, make sure you like the uh, the hit that thumbs up button. If you're new to the channel, subscribe to the channel. We we try to put out two videos a week, uh, along with at least one live stream. Sometimes we may not, we may not get to it, but we've been pretty consistent putting out the uh, two videos and live stream so what yeah. are some videos we have coming i want to say hi to han dunn too my good friend is in here hi darling uh, what other videos do we have coming out so we have um on saturday we got we got a new trailer all right so we can start taking our car and stop using toro and enterprise and everything else when we travel <laughs> long place uh, we actually long just distances. moved it for the first time today yeah so we have a trailer break install video coming up on saturday so that'll mm -hmm. be cool um, we're changing our videos up a little bit too. I'm curious what you guys think. So I think, I think you're going to like it. And then, um, we are going to have on, on next Tuesday, cause we do Tuesday and Saturday episodes, right? So Tuesday, we're going to have a whole Airstream. We did some awesome, awesome Airstream tour. So we're going to bring that to you on Tuesday. It's so that's 30 something minute, uh, well, closer to 40 minutes of just all yeah. new Airstream. So it's kind of yeah. cool. I think. There's a loyal following of Airstreams out there. Yeah, and we got a ton of ton of good videos coming, but those are the next two that are coming we up. We have somebody new um, to the... Yeah, well, I just want to jump back because Anna said, you, so you ordered the radios. Great, you're going to love them. Best thing ever. I hope you used the link I sent you. <laughs> I'll, I'll know tomorrow morning if you did. We will be checking up. By the way, Thank you, Anna. Uh, I'm sorry to interrupt yeah. you. So somebody, I, I don't know who it is. I think I know who it is. But somebody ordered from our Amazon affiliate links. They ordered almost $1,000 worth of uh, goods, which we are very grateful for. Thank um, you very much If anybody much doesn't know, we have the Amazon affiliate links. We try to put them on all videos. Any reviews that we do of product that we actually use, um, we'll either tell you it sucks or it's good. And usually if we put it on a video, it's good because we use it. So anyway, we put those at Amazon affiliate links. It won't cost you any more. But if you order them, we get a commission. It's like 45%. Usually the orders are like 10 bucks, but somebody ordered almost a thousand dollars worth of things, which is awesome. So whoever that was, thank you very much. Thank and whoever you, we appreciate hasn't it. used them, use them. <laughs> um, okay. So road to nowhere RV, my you first YouTube live watch ever, like ever, or for us, like your first actual YouTube, whatever it is. Thank you so much. I we, subscribers, we right? welcome. I think it sounds familiar. Yeah, yeah. So thank, thank you. Thank you for coming in. Um, Anna, I'm not sure if I used the link. No, oh, Anna. Wah, wah. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> At least you got the product. It's a good product. Um, <laughs> Blake, you dropped a video yesterday. What, how what about, video? We got to see. I'm subscribed to your new yeah. vision. I didn't do, get a notification. Do we click the bell? We got to make I sure we click the bell. I got to check it out. Hopefully it's something good. What is it about? Let us know. Yeah, let us know. Is it about veggie burgers? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, ever. Road to nowhere. We're your first ever. Well, oh, welcome. Nice. Thank it's you very, very much. We have a lot of fun here. So um, you missed out last week. We had, we had Matt's from Matt's RV review and people were really loving that, that live fun. stream. That was fun. Um, we're trying to, we're reaching out to some other people. We may have some collaborations coming up with some other popular YouTubers, yes. but we're not going to let it out yep. until keep you in suspense. We know we also got contacted by another pretty big channel. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to say anything Thanks about it. <laughs> not going to say anything about it, but there may be something coming down the in the near future, within the next couple of so months, we'll, we might be sharing it. So, so if you're not subscribed to the channel, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you can stay, you know, in tune with what we're up to. It's, it's exciting. Okay. So the reason we're here is so, um, tech, technologically inclined Izzy can share what his, I think. It's his not really wisdom. What I know. <laughs> no, you are, can share his wisdom on how we stay connected on the road, which is pretty important, um, but anyway, go ahead. You yeah, so um, I don't know if anybody doesn't know, we go to the forums a lot uh, on Facebook and you know I kind of post in there a lot. And one of the big, it's almost like daily, multiple times a day. The question is, how do you get internet on the road? You know, how do you stay connected? How do you get, why? it all comes down to the same thing. How are you getting high speed internet at some kind of computer data on the road, right? So we figured out, I think a pretty good way that's worked really well for us. Um, so just a little background on us, you know, MJ runs her own business. Uh, she has a, a pretty big dog training business. Um, she has numerous employees and pretty much she works for ho from home doing the administrative portion of that business. Um, 
when we are on the road, that mobile home becomes her, her home. And if she's not connected, she can't field emails, which are huge, right? You can't field your, your, your contacts through whatever different venues you get contacted from. I'm very, I just want to say I'm, I'm very big in my business on customer service. I, I like responding to people right away. So if any of you leave comments on our YouTube, uh, on our videos, you'll probably see that we respond very quickly. And I'm the same, I, I, you deserve that. And so do my clients. So I need to have good working um, service for my business. So it's, it's very important to me. Um, go ahead. So with that being said, she has to be connected. Um, and it, you know, it just has to be connected for email and at least phone calls. So, so far, you know, we've been, listen, we haven't been out to like, you know, Utah or the middle of Wyoming, but we've been to, even where we live, uh, we don't get very good cell service. Um, Verizon is okay. AT&T is, is like really nothing. So the internet connection that we have um, is through AT&T and we're able to, to get um, 18 megabit download speeds, um, AT&T with the connection we have. So. I would just want to quickly touch upon some of the common um, connections that are out there. And listen, this is really going to be based on a, what your budget is because budget's always number one, right? If you're willing to spend the money, I mean, you can get a satellite system and, and get internet out in the middle of the ocean if you want, but that's big money, right? And that's not realistic for a lot of us. Um, and B what your uses are. So if you're like a hardcore camper and you go camping to disconnect, unlike us, um, this is not going to matter to you, right? If you can check your email once every four days, you can it hop doesn't on matter. the campground Wi-Fi. Yeah, that's not for works. us. It's, it's not realistic because, like I said, she works, and and I'm I kind of somehow have to be connected for work. Um, so that's not how it works for us. So here are some of the common um ways you can connect online, right? So you have your campground Wi-Fi, right? So most private campgrounds or chain campgrounds are going to have some kind of Wi-Fi connection. And in our experience, it's been, uh, it's okay. It's hit or miss, right? So either a, you'll have a good connection in one part of the campground, but then like in the pit or somewhere else, like you, you can't get any connection. Um, but even if you do have good connection, a lot of time that Wi-Fi is going to be limited. They're going to limit the speeds. It's going to be like, you know, under one meg download speed. It's really just to check email and, uh, you know, maybe update your Facebook. You're not going to be able to stream anything. And that's if you if you even can get a connection, because a lot of times you can't. So put it like this, even at Disney, so world class Disney at their campground, you can get Internet everywhere. We connected just so I could test it. I think it was like two meg download speeds. It was, it was pretty poor. I mean, you can maybe stream, but it's going to buffer a lot. Um, so that's one way to get connected. So you can you can essentially um, connect your phone or your computer through that Wi-Fi if you so wish. That's like probably the simplest way. They, they sell some other uh, pieces of equipment. Um, some examples out there are like a, one called Wi-Fi Ranger. And I think the newer ones... Uh, what that does, it essentially, it's like an antenna that goes um, on your roof and it's it's a piece of, you know, like a router inside your, your rig. And that allows you to, the, the antenna will help you uh, stretch out how far you can get that Wi-Fi, like pick it up. But just remember, you're, you're limited to what the, the source Wi-Fi is putting out, right? So if they're only putting out one gig and you have full bars on your Wi-Fi, the best you're going to download is is uh sorry one gig one meg the best you're going to download is one meg so just because you put a booster it doesn't mean it's going to increase your speed so just understand that you're still kind of at the mercy of whatever the the campground wherever you're at is putting out as far as uh, the download speeds of your of your wi-fi so that as we're talking put any you know put questions okay if you have them just mm -hmm. go and type whatever you want I'm just going to be looking into the camera. MJ will be reading and she'll, you know, kind of pop in if there's any questions. And I mean, I don't have all the answers. I'm just going to tell you what I know and what, what has worked for us. And if there's something better out there, please let us know because we may look to upgrade. Um, so the other options are um, you could do satellite, right? You can um, get a satellite dish on your roof. Uh, I'm not, from my understanding, I don't have firsthand experience with this, that it's very expensive um, and the download speeds aren't that great. Uh, the upside is you can pretty much get, if you have a shot of the sky, you can get internet pretty much everywhere, right? Even if you're like out in the desert, but 
from my understanding, these these are multi thousand dollar um, setups, and they're kind of not realistic for most people. Uh, the third option out there is um, getting your internet over cellular, right? So that's how most people now, with the advent of uh, smartphones, you know, iPhones and Android phones, you're able to you have you're connected to the world at your fingertips. And uh, you could, if you're satisfied with that, you can get all your internet, you know, through your phone or a lot of phones have, um, you can use them as a wireless hotspot and you can connect your computer or other device um, to that phone. Uh, it works well if you have a good cell phone signal in the area, that's really gonna be dependent on your carrier. Um, it's pretty well accepted that nationwide Verizon is pretty much the, the best carrier for speed and coverage. Now, that's not to say some areas aren't better with AT&T, but overall, Verizon, year after year after year, comes out as the best you know, coverage and speed. They also happen to be the most expensive for a reason. You get what you pay for. You get what you pay for. Uh, second is usually AT&T. And a not to say AT&T is bad. AT&T is very good. Um, they're just not as, for the most part, not as fast as uh, Verizon. Now, when we were out in Indiana... We were uh, we were connected to our AT and T hotspot, and it had forty plus meg download speeds at without, the service center. Yeah, without an external yeah. antenna. Um, mm -hmm. If I would put the external antenna, it probably boosted up more. But it just, I guess there was a cell site right there. Now there was some other couples in the uh, where we were staying at, at the Newmar Center. They had T Mobile and they had zero connection. So um, yeah, so so it really depends on your connection and how important it is to you and how much you want to pay. Uh, um, hi, Harry. <laughs> What's going on, Harry? Thanks for joining. Uh, the second way uh, through cellular you can connect is through a cellular hotspot, right? So that's going to be kind of something like this, right? This is a, a Netgear Nighthawk. Um, it's a cellular hotspot modem. So instead of us connecting through our phone, we have this thing. This has a SIM card in it, and it's it's on a separate line in at and And when I turn this on, this only functions as a hotspot, kind of like what you have in your home, right? So most homes, if cable's coming in, you're going to be hardwired into that modem. And then there's probably going to be some kind of uh, Wi-Fi router that's going to take that signal and boost it out. This is kind of getting rid of the wire, and it's just getting this cellular uh, data, and you're using the cellular data as your internet connection. So with this device, um, you turn this on. This is portable, so anywhere you have a cell phone signal, uh, at least through AT&T, because that's the SIM card I have in here, um, it'll work and you can connect up to 20 devices on here. So for us, uh, we are very connected. Um, our, we have like a smart house. we got the, the, the Nest cams <laughs> and the, the Nest thermostats and the smart, uh, smoke detectors. And we have, uh, power, power over ethernet outside cameras, new vision. I'm sure you'd be proud of that. I know you hate Nest, but we do have power over ethernet outdoor cameras. Um, and multiple computers and smart TVs and Xbox and all that nonsense. We're, we're connected. We're, we're addicted. We're connected. In more ways than we should be, probably. The same when we go on the road. Um, at minimum, we have one Nest Cam. We have two uh, MacBooks, a tablet, and three three phone cell phones. No, because we have a business phones too. Four. So five. Five. five oh, five. Five phones. Five phones my work phone, phone too. <laughs> <laughs> and an Xbox One, okay? So so our, our setup has allowed us to connect all of those simultaneously. Oh, and I'm sorry. And we also stream um, television Roku. through uh, two Roku sticks, okay? So I don't even know how many. I kind of lost how many connections mm -hmm. that is, but we're, we're pulling in a lot of data. Um, so I'll share with you how we started our, our connection, how, what we've started with, and now what we've kind of upgraded to and what the advantages and disadvantages are of both, okay? So- Always learning. We're always learning. learning. Listen, technology is always changing. Um, something that's two years old in the technology world is like you know 50 years old in human years. So it, things you, change very quickly. We're curious too what, what other people use, You know what you guys use too. <laughs> oh, there goes my iPad. Feel free to chime in with that. So prior to this, I kind of did a lot of research. Um, I read a lot uh, regarding video door. We don't have a video doorbell. Um, I can always pull that shade up and look. <laughs> I get. I mean, I saw the connections to, to do the video doorbell. I, I don't. If I'm going to do one, it's going to be through battery. I'm not going to drill anything out, and I don't know how necessary it is for us under rig at home. 
I have a, a power over Ethernet um, camera hitting right over the front door, so we don't need the, power, the uh, video doorbell at home. Don't MJ is always on the cameras, always. <laughs> I'm a little obsessed. So back to our connection. So when we had our travel trailer, we didn't travel as much as we do now. Um, but there was there were times where we couldn't get a connection, right? Because we were just mm -hmm. using the cell phone and some more remote areas, some state parks in PA. We just mm -hmm. we just couldn't get connection. Um, so we decided when we got the motor home that being connected was pretty important to us. Now there was a offering to get the wine guard system um, stock, you know, as an option through uh, Numar. We kind of declined that, and I did it for a couple of reasons. Um, a it was very expensive. I think it was like a twenty five hundred dollar option. I don't like something permanently mounted on my on the roof, simply because, like I said. Technology is always changing. So two years from now, that's going to be old technology. And now I have this this dome mounted on the roof. And when I go to change it out, you know, things seem to tend to get smaller as they become more advanced. So now I got stuff drilled out in there. I, I just didn't want it. Um, I wanted to be able to uh, change with the times as things uh, progressed, right? Like that—that that was the kind mm -hmm, of thought. And mm -hmm. and actually, the RV salesman agreed. Uh, you know, he, he threw out the option of the wine guard, but he said was like, eh, there's probably better stuff out there. So we started off with um, this, this one that I'm holding on my hand, and I have a little picture here. Uh, let's see. This is the Netgear Nighthawk, um, the MR1100 uh, LTE mobile router. Um, it runs on... It, well, ours runs on the AT&T network. These are 200, I believe you can get it for $250 at Best Buy. They're actually not cheaper on Amazon. Amazon, I think they're 359 because they're, these are in high demand. A lot of people use these. Like I said, you can connect 20, uh, up to 20 devices on here. It also has a port here. So if you wanna like hook up a printer or some kind of ethernet connection, uh, output you can do that um, and it also has a USB port but what's really sets this above the rest and why I chose this initially was because the back here um, there's two connections right here one two right so those connections there those are uh, external antenna ports and that becomes pretty important uh, when you are going to a more remote location. These are two uh, MIMO, um, multiple in, multiple out. Don't ask me to get into detail because I, I don't know it all, but essentially that that's the kind of antenna you want to use. Um, you want to use an external uh, MIMO antenna. There are some other booster antennas out there. Um, I know WeBoost makes one, but what you want to do is really get an antenna, you know, cable an antenna and have it out pointing. Directional is better. Directional is better. You could use an omnidirectional. So the difference is an omnidirectional antenna is going to be like a straight antenna, like a cylinder, right? And it's going to pull in signal from all around it, which that's the advantage of it, right? A directional antenna, they call them the Yagi antennas. They kind of look like if you saw the uh, the picture we had in the thumbnail, that's the antenna we use. So those are much more powerful. You can see there's two antennas and it's going to be one for each port, right? Because it's, it's a, a MIMO, so multiple in, multiple out. They're twisted at 45 degrees, and you're going to point them to the closest cell phone um, tower. And that's going to really, really boost how much uh, signal is coming into this hotspot. Okay. And, and I'm talking significant. Like, so if you guys didn't watch, we did a video down in Virginia Beach um, using this same system and that antenna, which I'll show you over here. Let's see if I can pull up the antenna. Oh, maybe I can't. Oh, here we go. So here's the antenna. This is the exact antenna I use that we use, and that's going to be mounted on a five foot PVC pole. We attach it to our ladder um, via it's called uh, Flag Buddy. So essentially, Flag Buddy. Well, pre Flag Buddy, you should well, have seen us well, trying to yeah, get pretty, it up there. See, you learn this. You learn this stuff every day. So this is <laughs> Flag Buddy over here. I'm going to put it on my face. So, so I'll tell you our initial setup, right? So we had <laughs> we had this um, this wiring. Directional antenna. It's pretty big uh, on a five Very foot top heavy five foot PVC pole, and then I had it with uh, worm clamps clamped on to the rear ladder. I used to put like um, the foam uh, pipe insulation so it wouldn't scratch, and then we'll. It wasn't 
a super complicated job. It's definitely easier now. It would take us about 15 minutes. We kind of had to crank those worm clamps down. And then somebody from a forum turned me on to the, uh, the flag buddy. And the flag buddy, it was made to fly uh, flag masts. Um, so that's a permanent attachment to your rear ladder. And I use a one and a half inch PVC pole and you literally just put it in and tighten it in. And it's done in like 30 seconds. It's freaking awesome. That's so much easier. So uh, these, all these links will be in the description below. So anyway, so we initially used this setup. And if you watched our video when in Virginia Beach, um, I did a before and after download speed test. Uh, so it was without the external antenna. I think we have one bar LTE. And we were downloading uh, four megs per second, which is like... You know, it's okay. You usually need like three to four megs to be able to stream. Um, sorry. Uh, so we then hooked up the external antenna and it shot up to over 30 megs, uh, down, which is really good. Like that is really, and I should, we showed, uh, we, we had, um, there was tennis on television and we had on both televisions and it was like no buffering. It was perfect. Crystal clear. Crystal clear. So Virginia Beach, even though we're in Virginia Beach, we're, kind of, we're on a campground and I don't think we're really close to a tower, but it worked really well. So the only drawback uh, of these antennas here is that you got to be, you have to point them to the cell tower and it, that's done very easily. Phone. There's an app out there and it's called uh, Fine Tower. So you download that app, it's free. And what it does is when you, you open the app and you do a scan and then it's going to tell you all the towers in the area. And then it'll, there's a little arrow that shows up. So when you turn your phone, it'll point toward where that tower is. So it makes it real easy. I just put the phone on top of the antenna and I make sure they're both lined up the same way. So wherever that, uh, the arrow is on the antenna, I make sure on the phone, I make sure the antenna is pointing the same way. And that's going to give me the best signal. Uh, and that's kind of how it works. Then we run the cabling down. Well, we were running it down and under the slide. And then we had this thing mounted on the wall with um, removable Velcro and the two connections underneath, the two uh, TS9 connections. So what were the advantages of this setup? Well, it's completely portable, right? So we could take, I could throw this in, in the backpack. And as we walked around, we, we had, you know, cellular everywhere. The other advantage was um, it runs on a battery and it, it's uh, electric. So with the battery, you don't always have to be plugged in uh, and, and it had the external antenna. What were some of the disadvantages and why, ha why have we upgraded since then recently? I can tell you we're ve very data hungry. Um, we, when we were going out uh, every weekend or so, we were averaging over, almost 600 gigs a month. And when you're streaming, I mean, we're streaming all day television. So when you're doing that much, it, it, it sucks down the battery on this and it heats it up. And what would happen was if it got to a certain temperature, um, it wouldn't allow as a safety mechanism, um, the lithium ion batteries, when they get too warm, it wouldn't allow you to put a charge in it anymore. So what I had to do was essentially take the back cover off, put like an ice pack on it. Um, Sometimes it will reset to cool down and then, you know, everything obviously we're all connected. So everything would, you know, start buffering and you had to wait for this to reset. So not that it didn't work. It worked really good. But for our purpose, um, since we were so data heavy, I think this is more like a consumer grade. I don't think it was um, designed for like a heavy use, like an RV. If you're using it just casual to get on the Internet, this, this is going to work fine. I didn't even say casual. If you're going to use it, you're going to, you know, watch a couple hours of tv it's fine but we always have the tv running because we have the dogs with us then that, that, that uh, nest cam is always running people are always on there but there's always something mm -hmm. going on it's just sucking data and sucking power so we have since upgraded from this and like i said this works really well we've upgraded the router but what we have we have kept the antenna because in my opinion this wiring antenna is right now the best you can buy um they're made in the usa it's a company that is just, uh, they just engineer antennas. And this is actually one of the lower end ones. And these are kind of expensive. This is like a $400 setup. You can get these uh, with four, six, eight, but then it just gets almost like too crazy. Um, but it works really well. They have a 30 day 
Um, no questions asked, money guarantee. Like if you don't like it, you can return it. And you email them or you call them and actually somebody answers the phone, which is good. Hmm. That's always nice. So does anybody have any questions out there before I keep rambling on? Are there any questions? Yeah. Let us know what questions you have. Okay. I'm going to continue with this. I hope I'm not boring you guys too much. Just let me know if I am. This um, is like an informative Yeah, you may learn session. something from this. So so this is the new uh, setup we have, right? So let's see here. So we're still using the uh, wiring antenna, same thing. But we've moved on after doing some reading. Uh, you know, we, we moved on to a tarantula. Yeah, we <laughs> would. So like I said, the thing would heat up. I'd have to throw an ice pack on it. And it kind of... I almost sound like like a baby, like, you know, first world problems. We kind of get it kind of annoying that, you know, like once a day this thing would heat up and we have to, you know, we charge it overnight and sometimes, you know, we had to reset it. First world problems, right? So I just started doing some more research and I really should have got the, this one the first time. And the reason why I didn't is because it was like $75 more. And listen, you should really buy once, cry once, right? So this was, this was $250, right? <laughs> The one that I'm showing you is the, the Mophie 4500 version two. It's 329. So it's a little bit more, but in the long run, I'm actually spending more than I should have. Uh, I'm gonna try to sell this one off on, on Amazon or something. It still works great. It's just, this is a better setup. So with this Mophie 4500, why did we choose this? Well, I've read nothing but good reviews about the Mophie 4500. And it's because it's like a commercial, industrial grade uh, geek LTE router. And there's, there's functions in here I wouldn't even use, but like the IT pe people get like, you know, uh, crazy over this thing. So this is the front of it. Let me bring the back of it here. So here's the back of it, right? So anybody is familiar, um, Blake, you probably know what, you know what this looks like. So you have, um, you have all your ethernet out ports, right? So you could actually use this as a, like a modem, right? Um, there is a SIM card that goes in there. Uh, it runs on Verizon, AT&T, and I believe Sprint. I think it runs on all the networks. Um, the only thing I did, I just I just threw my AT&T SIM card in there and it works right through. You uh, you can log into it through like 192 dot whatever, whatever. You set up your username, password, your network name. Um, you can do all kinds of things. You can do guest networks and all kinds of sub mask I, stuff. I don't even know about it. Like it's way more complicated. Why I like it. We had the wine guard connect to point and puffs less rugged. I mean, you can read that. We had the wine guard connect 2.0 on puffs last. I don't get, is there a spelling <laughs> mistake there? Ann? I'm sorry. We don't get it. She'll answer your stuff. I'm going to continue. <laughs> I'm gonna on her last year. I'm gonna continue um, with this. So let me quickly say, hey, casual RV, you're welcome. So with the Mophie 4500, um, why I like it is it's not battery operated, right? And it is like industrial grade, like I said. So it's it's made of like an aluminum, so the heat dissipates from it. This thing doesn't get hot. We put this to the test up in um, in the KOA, and actually that KOA. The last time we went, we had this guy, right? And I, we were able to pull down, you know, decent internet speeds, but I don't think we ever broke 10 megs. This thing that I'm showing you, we were pushing like 28, 30 megs, which is like same service, not different service. We actually were one down from the same camping spot we had the first time we went. Mm -hmm. So we're in the yeah, same yeah. general area. So I was hitting off the same tower, uh, same uh, antenna I was using. But the speed was greatly, like greatly increased, um, and it, it's in the equipment. I don't know why, but like I said, I've I've read um, people that went from this guy to the Mophie said it's like you know going from a Hyundai to like a Rolls Royce as far <laughs> as internet. Like you're you're getting to the same spot, you're just getting there way faster, oh, faster. and you're getting there in way more luxury, right? So without an overheat. So a couple more <laughs> things that we liked here. So okay, so the these two back antennas. This is kind of a little inaccurate. I pulled this off of Amazon. This picture. So the two back antennas, right where it says Mophie there. Those two pack antennas, those are actually external LTE antennas, okay? They, it's gonna come with two paddle antennas. This guy right here, the antennas are built in, right? Or, or it has the ports where you can use your external. 
The Mophie, which I didn't bring it out because it's, it's mounted in the rig right now, and I'm not taking the whole thing out because I, I mounted it, like, hidden away. The Mophie with those two back antennas, you can see they're sticking out. So even if I don't use the external, the, the, the roof-mounted one, the wiring one, I'm still going to be able to pull in better signal because you have two external antennas. Then you have the two in front here. Those are your Wi-Fi antennas. So it's going to pull in the signal from the back. It's going to spit it. That's MJ dropping a tablet. It's going to spit it out to wherever you want it to up front. So that's going to greatly increase the range of your, the range that is putting out a signal. So with this guy here, I had to mount this inside our bedroom. I had tried mounting it uh, underneath in one of our bays. So, so my, ideally what I wanted to do was run the cabling from the uh, external antenna, run it down the ladder, and then just run it into one of the bays and have it nice and hidden. And then was hoping that this guy would broadcast a signal throughout the motorhome. Well, that didn't happen, right? Because it doesn't have the external Wi-Fi antennas, right? So it wasn't strong enough. It couldn't penetrate the metal and the wood. Really not that much, just the, the metal and the wood from the floor. I could get in the bedroom, but the front of the rig, no good. I had to do a repeater. Um, and even if I was, it, it was better if I had it inside the rig rather than under. The Mophie, uh, I have it. Well, tell them where we had it. Yeah, so we had yeah. it in the bedroom. Yeah, but on her you know side. those tiny little, well, on our coach, you know, the on our nightstands, mm -hmm. it's like a little, you know, square um, area. So that's where it was. So that took up, you know, so I didn't really have a place to put things. Anna, uh, or Annie, I'm sorry. Yeah, the, yeah. the wine guard, and if if you can upgrade to the Mophie with, with this antenna that I'm showing you, I, I promise you, it will smoke that wine guard 100%. Because it, it, this is, in many people's opinion, not only my opinion, in many people's opinions, if you YouTube and you Google this setup, this antenna with this router, you are going to see people, not only on rigs, people like in rural North Carolina that have like, they're in the mountains and they have, they have this antenna mounted up on their roof with this router and they are wire free. They don't have cable coming in. They don't have um, Verizon 5s. They don't have it. And they're, and they're streaming and they're gaming and they're doing all of it. So this is the real deal. Um, so it's mounted underneath in the bay. I do have a repeater in the front of, I have it behind the front couch. I have a Netgear repeater. Um, and that's just so the whole rig is covered. So we have, not only that, like I think whole, the whole campground is covered. <laughs> so we have, we have our, our, our signal, uh, our network name is That There's an RV. Mm -hmm. I don't know if everybody from uh, Christmas Vacation. Christmas Vacation, oh, Uncle uh, that Eddie. That There's an RV. So we named it That There's an RV. So uh, I think that broadcasts through the whole campground. Mm -hmm. It does make people chuckle. That's why I, I named it that. <laughs> but it broadcasts everywhere. Um, this thing is plugged in. You don't have to recharge it. It doesn't get hot. Um, people have, have there's videos of people mounting this in their like 130 degree attic and running it all day. It doesn't get hot because it's aluminum dissipates the heat. The other cool thing about this is I told you about the um, program I use, right? I go up, I point my, I download the program, open the app. It's going to show me where the cell tower is, right? But what I can also do, I can actually go into this router, you know, 192 dot whatever. I go into the router and then it's going to tell me a signal strength. It's going to give me signal strength bar and tell me how many decibels I'm pulling in, right? So mm -hmm. now I can fine tune that antenna. So I have the one app that's telling me, okay, your cell tower is, in, is generally in this direction. Now I go into the router, real, you know, geeky stuff. And now I can really fine tune it. So I can see it goes from, you know, 118 down to 112 or negative 112 down to like 108. And now like I'm in the sweet spot, like it's going to tell me poor, fair, good, you know, excellent. So now I have it like tuned in just, and she'll, she'll look at me on the roof like, what the hell are you doing? Right. I'm like, just don't worry it's about like it. It's like Revenge of the, the Nerds. The signal, huh? you're going to, you're going to thank. So I that's the very other grateful. big advantage of, of this one is just that the ability and the customer support and this stuff is, is like the real deal. And like, if you want to run a network on here, you see all the ports, you can put printers. You could even do like um, power over ethernet cameras on here if you want. I don't know if a cell signal will allow that. I don't know how much you can pull in, but you could, you could do it if you want, at least four. Um, so that has worked really, really well for us. Um, 
if anybody's looking to get this set up, you, if you have any questions about it, um, it, it works really well. The antenna, we don't plan on updating at all. The next update, I, I think we had the best of the best right now until 5G is more uh, mainstream. I mean, it's, it's popping up now in cities, but I think it's probably gonna be like another two to three years before 5G is really mm -hmm. mainstream. And then by, by then, Mophie will have a 5G router and wiring already has the five, 4G, 5G antennas, but I'm not gonna buy it because it's, it, 5G is really not even realistic at this point. Um, but that's really, that's gonna be a big game changer. When 5G comes out, I mean, you're gonna be talking about 500, you know, up to a, a gig download speeds per second, which is gonna be huge, 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 huge. So. And then we'll all start growing like 11 toes and things yeah. like that with the. So MJ's always worried about the waves, but she doesn't wanna give up the, uh, the internet, so. <laughs> worried about the what? About oh, the, the, the radio waves. Yeah. Well, I gotta make money. Mm -hmm. You know, we have to work. So with this setup, uh, Jason can play Xbox One, uh, you know, like, like gaming online. Um, we have the, the uh, at least the one Nest Cam so you could watch the dogs and then the multiple devices that we've told you about. And we also, because many, we usually up, um, we upload videos on, um, on Saturdays. Yes. So we'll, you know, we upload, um, you know, a decent um, length video as well from there. Um, I know I'm coming to you for the install party. We got a lot of parties planned, Blake. <laughs> we got a lot of parties. What barbecues. install parties is what you mean? Like the, the you're going to install our camera? We have cameras. Are you? Yeah, I'm going to install your internet setup. Is that what you're talking about? <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, like so that's the setup we have. You know, it's going to be what works for you guys. If you want the wine guard, if you want the thing is with the wine guard, and please correct me if I'm wrong. From my understanding, in that in that dome. You have uh, omnidirectional antennas, which, like I said, they'll, they'll work okay. But you got to remember, they're, they're probably only about that big on each side. And uh, the best ones are going to be the ones that you point. So the disadvantage is, right, if, you're drive, if we're driving down the road, the only internet we're going to have is what those little paddle antennas are pulling in from uh, underneath the rig. You'll, you'll probably have an advantage driving down the road with the wine guard because you're, you're high up top. But... The reality is when we're driving down the road, we have our cell phones. You know, we're not really, we're not streaming mm -hmm. TV down the road. Uh, we're not really doing that. We're driving down the road. So for us, for us, that has worked really well. We don't do the satellite television. We stream everything. Oh, the, the one last important thing I forgot, our service. I forgot our service. So we were supposed to have um, the gentleman that we get the service from on for whatever reason, he couldn't make it. But we use uh, a company called Unlimited Internet Service, I believe his name is. And when we originally started uh, using the connection with the, the Netgear, I had went to a um, one of the resellers on eBay. It was uh, $50 a month uh, for AT&T, unlimited, unthrottled 4G LTE. Now, I don't know if, I'm sure there's people out there that know what that means. But for those that don't know what it means, so LTE, uh, 4G LTE is pretty much the fastest cellular you can get now. Uh, you can get 5G. I'm sorry. You can get 5G, but it's limited to certain areas. Our area, no good. It's usually like you know New York City, Chicago, some places in Dallas. They have pockets of those cities where you can get 5, 5G. 4G LTE is kind of the standard right now. So unlimited uh, for $50 a month through AT&T meant unlimited, right? So if you used uh, 10 gigs or if you used 10,000 gigs, it would be unlimited. When I say no throttling, so throttling, so cell phone carriers, um, some of these unlimited plans, like on AT&T, the normal unlimited plan is unlimited till you get to 22 gigs of data you used. Then they reserve the right under congestion or under certain circumstances to throttle your speed down. And what I mean by throttling, I mean, they slow down your speed. So you may go from, you know, normally you're getting 15 or 20 meg download speeds. You may be throttled down to like 600 kilo kilobytes, which is like, you know, nothing. <laughs> so when I say unthrottle, I mean, truly, truly like you get as much data as you want. No data speeds, uh, no throttling speeds. So uh, through the forums, I was uh, people were talking about you know where they get their internet service, where they get the internet service. Uh, this individual or the company called Unlimited Internet Provider um, was recommended by somebody. I reached out to this individual uh, via Facebook, 
and asked them about their service. And so their service is uh, AT&T, unlimited, no throttle, for $34.99 a month. Um, that is really cheap. That That is unbelievably cheap. Like if I didn't have to mount an antenna on our roof and get another router, I would probably do that at home. Although we have Optimum now, we, we have 300 up, 200 down, I believe. Uh, it's like 44 bucks a month. So I, actually, I probably wouldn't. It's $10 a month, but much better data speed. So, you know, I tested it at, it was $39 to activate it and then $34.99 right through AT&T and it's automatically billed every month. We've had it there for about four months. And like I said, we average five to 600 gigs a month and it's been outstanding. It's been really good. So uh, it, that contact is in our link uh, below. Also, we were trying to get him on here to really answer some questions on how they do it and, and if there's any catch to it. From what I know, there's no catch. It, it's, it's worked every month. They also mm-hmm. sell different routers. Um, I don't know if they sell these. I think it's just because of cost. Like People don't want to pay for it, but I am sure probably can get it if you wanted to. Um, but you can bring your own device also. So that we pay thirty four ninety nine a month uh, for unlimited data on the road, and um, we bought the Mophie, which is three twenty nine, and then the uh, wiring antenna is, I believe, like three eighty. So you're talking about, you know, it's an investment of probably about eight hundred bucks. Again, if you have people, you know, if your family, if you guys are working on the road, it's money well spent. You know, I have to, I, I need this um, in order to run my business. So she writes it off on taxes. Yeah, so it's it's a necessity for us. Matt's um, from Matt's RV. What's hi, up, guys? Matt? Hey, y'all. We're talking we're, about uh, mobile internet, Matt. And Blake, um, we're installing all the crap in your RV. It's it's, it's yes, actually sir. really not much to install. It's it's pretty easy. Um, <laughs> the Mofi, I have it. Uh, just uh, two side tape Velcro. Uh, right on the sidewall inside the uh, one of the bay doors, and and the the other thing is just a PVC pipe that I cut from Home Depot, a five foot. It just goes a U connector on, you know, bolted on. Basically, I climb the ladder. She hands it to me. I put it in the flag buddy, connect my really two cables, easy. run them down, and then just connect them into the uh, Mophie. Real quick, Matt, are you uh, working the World Series? I was going to ask you that <laughs> on your man. video today, but I figured I'd ask you separately <laughs> yes are your beer man duties up and running yeah uh, I'm go south. i live in the south now so so I, I know i love that so uh yeah so i think there's, there's actually one other one other uh advantage i like to the mofi um so these ts9 connectors i think i have a thing here hold on let's see Okay, so these are the connector. This one right here, the SMA male, that is the external antenna connector for the Mophi. Uh, it screws in, secure. Like you, you screw it in, you can't pull it out, it's not gonna come loose. Okay, this, let's see the connector. This, the TSI, TS9 connector, that is the external connector, antenna connector for this guy, for the neck gear. That doesn't screw in. That's just kind of held in, like you put it in, but it's not really like secure. So when we have it mounted uh, in the bedroom, sometimes NJ would unplug something and, and the antenna port would pull out, right? And then all of a sudden everything's buffering and we're like, all right, why is everything buffering? And then with the neck gear, when you go to use your external antenna port, you're supposed to reboot it, right? So now it's like a five minute process. So now we got to shut it off, plug them back in, reboot it. The SMA male is, is way better connection, way better connection, okay? And the uh, the wiring, the wiring antenna, the cabling that it comes with, um, basically it was the, S, the SMA, and then it just had a little pigtail with the TS9. So I just unscrew that pigtail, and it's an SMA, and it plugs right in. So there's no ch- they need to change the cabling for the wiring antenna. So I hope that helped everyone. <laughs> Hi, Don. Oh, Don was the one with the old fifth wheel. I remember. Oh, yeah, that was very the... cool, Don. Matt, both. I'm cheap. <laughs> Atlanta to Newark, Newark to DC. Well, wait, you fought. Oh, so you he do connections. Newark, you don't go yeah. direct. That's like. Yeah, that's that's, that's way kind of, adding time. You're going here, here, here. But I guess yeah, you're probably saving a lot of money not doing you know doing the stop. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, you got to leave Orlando Ron, for an hour. It's kind of cold up here now, Matt. It's getting ugh. Ron, do you steal people's internet on secure networks? Is that what you're telling us? <laughs> I would have phone it. <laughs> I just parked next to him. We would let you uh, jump on our that there's an RV. Just know when you jump on somebody's network, if they're good with computers, they can get into your stuff. Just so you know. I had that happen once. Yeah, that too, had to happen so. to her. <laughs> so you probably don't want to go on unsecured networks, especially if you're doing like banking or stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Our networks are secured. Um, we have a guest network. Um, but we have secured networks with complicated passwords. Well, not really, but enough now, that it'd be hard to figure out. Casual RV or it's John, right? I, I, I just want to make sure I'm connecting the names right. That's the guy from... Uh, okay. Yeah. Um, so, okay. yeah, so the price, like I said, was probably about 800 bucks, which sounds like a lot of money. and It is a lot of money. But remember, the WineGuard option... The one that's going to be obsolete in two years was twenty five hundred dollars, and you're drilling things into your roof, right? And there's die core around it that you have to maintain. And you know when that's obsolete in like a year and a half or two years, you have this dome. Like this guy, there's no drilling. I don't like drilling stuff into sidewalls and roofs if I don't have to. Um, we're going to be doing an install on a camera. Uh, Halo View camera. I think the battery is actually supposed to come tomorrow. Yeah, those of you that didn't here we had told everybody that halo view contacted us and and sent us a rear view camera to try out and and uh review and so we're going to be doing a bunch of videos on that shortly in the next few weeks right so we got the camera it's going to be an external uh we use a secondary camera kind of shooting down from the back so we can see our trailer because we got a 21 foot trailer and then it's gonna be seven inch screen right so Optimally, the, the camera comes with a, or could come with a bracket to put in the uh, pre-wired Furion, but we don't have a Furion pre-wired setup in our motorhome. Our motorhome already has a camera, um, and I didn't want to drill into anything. So I um, reached out to Halo View again. They have a battery option. The battery lasts about 18 hours. I asked them if they could send me out a battery to have a much cleaner install, and that's what they did, and it should be here tomorrow. So when I install that, it's going to be... Uh, the camera in the back on top of the roof, it's going to be um, probably two-sided tape and die cord down. Or I got to see how it works. Then there's going to be a repeater run to the front, uh, you know, wired. I'll, I'll tuck that in nicely. Connect the, the power source is going to be the battery because I wasn't drilling and tapping into things. Not, not in a new motorhome. It just wasn't happening. The other option was to put it on the back of the trailer and tap into like the uh, taillights. But the battery is going to be way easier for me <laughs> so <laughs> i put it out there asked them to send it they sent it so we'll be doing a video on that um and An unboxing and unboxing installation and then a review and i told them give them an honest review if it's great i'll say it's great and if it's crap i'll say it's crap but i don't think it's good I, yeah, yeah they've gotten good reviews, good reviews on amazon so i think i think it's going to be a good review and it really came to a perfect time because we just got the trailer i'm like yeah. how the hell are we going to see this trailer behind this and Lord and behold, we get a lot, you want to get a camera sent to a us. A lot more awesome. feet behind us yeah. now than we're used to. I have no we'll be problem. We take a video of that, of her dri driving well, the 24 foot trailer. I have no problem driving the motorhome. I love driving the motorhome. It's 37 feet, but now we're tacking on 24. 21, more. actually, 21 feet. We'll see. That'll we'll be see. Fun. Should be fun. So we unhooked it and we hooked it up and we kind of moved it around. So we, we, we kind of have a setup of how we think it's going to work it. The local, um, there's a local like nature center, literally like a minute from us. They have a huge parking lot. So they're going to be, they're kind enough. I call them. They're going to allow us to leave the trailer there the night before we leave. So the only thing we have to do is just essentially drive the motorhome down, connect it and, and be on our way. If that wasn't the case, it was going to be <laughs> pulling the trailer down with a smaller car because the motorhome and the trailer will not make the turn that we have to get out of our home. And then dropping the trailer there and then driving back home and then taking the motor home down and then hooking up, yeah. putting the car on and driving. So this is cutting out a lot that of stuff. That would steps. be like longer than our trip that we're going to take. And it wouldn't matter if we had four wheels down. Either way, there's no way we can get out towing anything of where we're at. It's just yeah. it's too narrow of a turn. So that is going to be, we'll be videotaping that also, um, you know, setting up the trailer and, and trying to get set up correctly. So any questions out there before we call it a night? I see there's some people here. Um, if is anybody new to the live stream, make sure you like it. If you like it, of course. Um, if you don't like it, still like yeah, it. Yeah, subscribe mm -hmm. and share. Um, 
we are hoping to continue bringing uh, good information to you guys. I hope this was informational. Is that a word? Informational? Informative. Would Informative. Be sorry. Choice, but that's okay. <laughs> Informative. Okay. She's the published author. I'm just the, uh, the grunt worker. <laughs> um, I hope this was informative. Uh, I know MJ was kind of quiet today, but she could just kind of let me deal with this nerdy stuff. I'm the dog one. He's the, he's the nerd. Yeah. It's like driving a cent. Yeah, pretty much. So we're 37 feet and then 21 feet. So yeah, kind of, but I think the hardest thing, hardest thing is going to be really, I think it's just going to be hooking up because once we get on the Mm -hmm. road, it's fine. And the highway is nothing, you know, the the big deal is going to be when, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, I was going to say when I first drove, I think I had may have mentioned this before when I first drove the motor home, I had never, I never drove our trailer and we went for a lesson, right? And the lesson was supposed to be four hours, right? <laughs> that was funny. And we get to the place and this guy goes, um, okay, well, um, get, get in the seat. What? Why don't you paint the picture of when we, what kind of place it was where we went? Uh, well, it wasn't like an RV place. It no, was like it a was trucker like a, yard. Yeah. Yeah. Like a stop. It, it was, it was very it was interesting. Semis. It was in South Jersey. Um, Yeah. And, uh, so, you know, we thought we were going to go into a classroom. Okay. This is what you need to look for. Here's how you set your mirrors, blah, blah, blah. Right. No, well, let's go. Let's go get on. Okay. Get in the driver's seat and let's go. That was it. So that's how I learned. I went out and I just drove it. Um, and it wasn't as bad as I thought, but I mean, we went through very tight spots too, like downtown Tom's river, New Jersey, which is, you know, if you're going to learn, that's the place to learn. But you know, I didn't uh, break off a mirror. Uh, yeah, I was a little nervous when, so it's kind of funny because <laughs> the guy's like, all right, who's driving? I'm like, she's going to drive. He's like, all right, um, yeah, I'm going to be here. Just, you know, just take it out and make it right. I'm like, wait, she, she never drove one of these before, <laughs> right? Like I drove down. She never drove. He's like, yeah, it's like, Joy, just, you know, just it's take just everything like big, wide. Just like take a, everything that, wide. You'll be all right. That, that was the lesson. I'm like, oh my take God, everything. we're going to die. <laughs> But no, hey, she did. did she it. did well. She I was, did it. She was on the Parkway and you know downtown, which is yeah, but, yeah. But now we're tacking on you know twenty one feet. Now you just gotta so. take everything wider, even wider. Yeah. <laughs> but look, I have no problem. The mirrors are there, and I you know I I think it's fun. Yeah, absolutely. It it is the best way to learn. It it's by doing it, you know, and praying a lot that <laughs> first time. <laughs> yeah, but now she drives it all the time. Yeah, now we, we fight over driving. Sometimes I'm like, babe, can you just slow down a little bit? Right. We're coming like doing from 75. Pers- can you just from, like slow down? Coming you're making from me the nervous. person that took the mirror off. <laughs> Thank you. Mirror, no mirror, right? So if anybody does not have questions, I think we're going to uh, cut it loose for the night. We're approaching one hour. Uh, I think we've hit our sweet spot with Ecamm Live. We are ditching um, Wirecast, Wirecast for now. This not ha- has not crashed, and we're no. getting good feedback. I've been watching the video, and it looks pretty good on the uh, replay. So I just want to shout out to um, I don't know who's still here. Um, I know we have people here. Um, to Blake, you know, New Vision, Harry, um, Don, Matt, and Act Ron. All of you guys that. Join us, Skywalker. yeah. I don't know if he's still here. They join us every week. It's so much fun to just sit and chat with you, um, chat at you. I feel like we know you guys. <laughs> I know you're like family. And you guys gonna be in Tampa? Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. we'll see. Um, great live stream as usual. Thank you, Blake. You're a doll. Anybody going to Tampa? We're gonna be there um, from Tuesday through the Sunday. Actually, we're leaving Sunday. We're flying out. Um, but we're super excited. We would love to meet people that we talk to each week. So let us know if you're going to be there. Um, we're going to get a lot of video, a lot of video from there. Tons. Yes. Tons. Good for you, Anne. Girl power. Uh, you do all the, so Anne, you have a, she has a base star, right? I think you I forget. What do you have, Anne? I, I, I thought you said you had a base star. I, I could really be. Um, yeah. Let us know. Yeah, Matt's still here. Tampa! Woo! <laughs> Party! So, so Ron said he really likes our videos. They're very informative. You do an excellent job. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Listen, when we started this channel, it was really kind of a give back because we learn so much on um, YouTube. Uh, some for the good, some for the bad, right? Uh, but it was really... we. I learned so much. We learned so much and we did so much work prior to starting the channel. I kind of regret not documenting a lot of stuff that we did prior to starting. There was a lot of stuff we did. 
prior, but you know, we, we got it, we started it and we listen, love the it. feedback has been great. Like we, we're getting contacted for some bigger channels, which is, kind of, or, which is, is pretty, you know, it's kind of flattering for us because we don't try to do anything special, right? Like we, you've seen our videos change a little bit. We try to change the intro, but we just, we're just ourselves and we just show, you know, this is not scripted. This is, we don't even like, we, I have like a little outline here of like what to talk about. Is these chicken scratch? But, but this is pretty much it. We just talk like from the heart and you guys are giving us the feedback and you seem to appreciate it. And we really thank you guys for that. We love sharing, um, in info, I was, for those of you that don't know, before I did my dog training business, I was a teacher for 20 years. I taught instrumental music in public school. She's a lot older than you for think. A yeah, I know. But tell me I look younger. Make me <laughs> feel better. Um, yeah, so, you know, I taught for years and I, I love, I love doing this and, and helping people and it's, it's just pretty awesome. And so we're so grateful to you guys. Um, so, wait, I just want to see, uh, Harry, you're going to Tampa. All right, we'll have Harry's going to gonna be yeah, there. Yeah, we have to meet you. I don't know what Harry looks like because he doesn't have a face on his profile. <laughs> no, He's a little he's empty man. Faceless Harry. Um, oh, Winnebago Adventure 27N. Okay, cool. Nice. I think you almost took up took off a mirror, I think you told us. I think she so said you that. have something in common? Yeah, well, she didn't take well, it she off. Didn't she didn't take it. I took it off. <laughs> hey, it made for a good video, though. Yeah, exactly. People like <laughs> Everything that, makes for a good video. I'd be under both fishing. <laughs> <laughs> We'll have to get down there, Blake. So All right. Good? I think we are good as usual. Thank you so much for joining us. We will be releasing a video on Saturday. Saturday. So be on the lookout for that. That's going to be the trailer break installation. One question I have actually before we go to that. You know, we have ideas for different live streams that we're doing. Um, what are some live streams you would like to see? You know, if there's anything you would want to hear us talk about, we're running about out of fun ideas. stuff. No, we're not. I mean, we have ideas, but what we want, what people want, um, you know, fun stuff or more informative things. Are there things that you would like to see um, from us? So let us know that. Um, yeah. Uh, oh, Harry. Yeah, Harry. Come on, you have to get a picture. We just see this silhouette, silhouette of Harry. Um, a casual. Oh, John. Good night. Thank you again for coming. We appreciate it. Um, and and, and her, you put, everybody Winnebago gets to things in Hershey. Hershey. Yeah, it was Hershey. us. Hershey got us too. Hey, um, New Vision Blake, go to New Mars website. Uh, they just updated their website with the Super C. Well, at least one Super C. The Supreme Air is not on there, but the Superstar is on there. And I think you will like it. It's pretty nice. So they have a bunch of pictures on their website on <gasps> Oh, for those of you that are keep, you know, always how I'm always talking about how Izzy changes his mind every day. Okay, so last week, by the way, it was a live stream a week ago. We said we were going to end, and we just keep yapping. A week ago, Izzy wanted a spacecraft fifth wheel, and what did I say? Give him two days. It's going to switch, right? So yesterday, I get a call. He was at work. <laughs> oh, hon, you got to check that. I don't even remember what was it. Four travel. Oh, four travel. That's the new one now. Yeah, we two should days, use travel. next live stream. I should do this every week. We should say, what is Izzy's flavor of the week? Well, it's actually Izzy's... changed to a Dutch star now. Uh, oh, that's right. It changed twice since the last yeah. live so, stream. Uh, Izzy's flavor of the week or flavors. We're not buying of any of these week. things. He's just, in my mind, these are things that we're getting. You know, I don't know. <laughs> we still got the base star. It's always No changed. panic anymore. We still got the base star. <laughs> and we which, by the, the way, star. which, uh, listen, by the way, if anybody has a new Mar out there, okay? Uh, I was on the phone with Newmar today, a little annoyed actually, but but they're gonna do the right thing. So, and then we're gonna end it after this, okay? <laughs> it just seems to keep popping in my head. So we have our. Remember, I told you you're supposed to lock your slides, right? So our two opposing slides in the bedroom, we lock the front, they lock the rear. We have uh, slide toppers on both, right? So the front slide toppers, there, there's uh, like a almost like a plastic catch that's drilled into the sidewall. So when when the slide closes, the edge of that topper hits that catch and doesn't damage the sidewall. The rear side of the topper on each side, passenger and driver, when that slide topper comes, there's screws inside. It goes right up against the sidewall and there's no catch in there. So when we're at um, the KOA, we have the slides open and I'm looking. I'm like, what the hell is that? So I see this white spot. I think it's like maybe like a leaf or something. 
it's actually like a chunk of fiberglass like missing from uh, the side, like the molding on the sidewall. So I'm like, what? How did this happen? Because there's there's no mark. Like if a branch, you kind of see like a running mark. I'm like, maybe something hit it. Whatever. I call a body shop by us, you know, an RV body shop. They send them pictures. They're going to fix it. It's not that much, whatever. But then I, I look at it a little close. So I go outside this morning because I'm obsessed with this stuff. And now the sidewalls are closed. The slides are closed. And I look and I don't see the mark, right? So I'm like, okay, wait a second. Let me, I open it up. And sure enough, the inside of that slide topper, when it's closed, it's rubbing against that sidewall. Now it's the same thing on the passenger and on the driver's side. So I call Numar. And so sometimes you have to be a little uh, assertive. <laughs> All right. So I call Numar, Coachy. true story, this morning. I call them up and I say, you know, we're still in the warranty. This is coach number, blah, blah, blah. And this is what's going on. Basically, what I just explained to you guys. So the first gentleman on there, he goes, okay, well, you know, yes, it's covered under warranty. You got to bring it to your dealership. So I'm like, well, our dealership is two and a half hours away. And the way it works is that you got to bring it to the dealership first. They take pictures of it. So it's two and a half hours each way. So that's five hours minimum. Plus, I'll probably be there for an hour and a half to two hours. So that's, that's a day off of work, which costs money, cost me money. So I got to bring it up there so they can take the pictures. Then I got to come back, right? Then I got to approve from Numar. Then I got to bring it back, right? And I got to drive back home because they're not going to finish that in a day because it's going to involve some body work. And then I got to drive back. So you're talking about three trips. At two and a half, so you're talking about three days off of work and like 21, I said, I said, I said, that's not, that's not realistic, right? I said, there's a local body shop that's closer to us that they're RV, they're an RV truck body shop, like they're certified, blah, blah, blah. I said, I'll send you the information. Like they got great reviews. No, we can't do that. I'm like, well, no, no, no. I said, you don't understand. Like I'm not driving two and a half hours. Well, you know, the closest one, there's one closer, it's in Connecticut. You know, it's it's like two hours, whatever. You're going to have to go there. I'm like, well, first off, they're probably not going to work on my motorhome. And secondly, now I got to pay like George Washington Bridge. It's like $30 to go over each well, time. And drive the George Washington right. Bridge yeah, in exactly. a motorhome. And take three days no, off of work. Thank you. So he's like, well, this is, I swear to God, he goes to me, well, you know, we got to pay for this and, you know, we got to make sure the work is done correctly. So then I, I, I kind of like, I said, well, if the work was done correctly from the factory, I wouldn't have to be calling you for this. All right. Said, because this is not supposed to happen. He's like, uh, okay, well, hold on. So he transferred me to a gentleman named Steve Mosier, Steve Mosier. So if you buy a Numar, every uh, um, model you're assigned like a consultant, right? You should have did a video on the issues with the top. Yeah, I actually, I'm we actually, still my, can, I am going to do the video. Yeah. I wish I would have recorded the thing, but that would kind of been kind of like, you know, scummy if I recorded the guy. I didn't expect to get that answer because every time we call Numar, they've been really yeah, awesome about stuff. Great. I guess this guy had a bad day or something. I don't know. So anyway, I got transferred to Steve Mosier. Um, actually, I emailed Steve Mosier the pictures and then he answered me back and I called and I get transferred. I called Numar and I get transferred to him. So I'm like, hey, I'm the guy who sent you the picture of, you know, the piece of fiberglass, essentially that's chunk that's missing. It's not a hole. It's kind of just like carved out. So it's not leaking or anything. But it looks like it, it looks, looks horrible. horrible. Yeah. So he's like, yeah, absolutely. I see that. Uh, he's like, you know, you have to go to the dealership. And says, Steve, listen, I go, I, I we were at Newmar in Indiana. Like that, that is like a 10 hour drive. And then I was just up in RV1 Albany for an awning that you guys couldn't fix there because you couldn't get it in time. Like I can't, like I can't go back three times. I said there's an RV dealer, an RV um, body shop that'll do it. And he goes, I completely understand what you're saying. Uh, yes, that makes sense. I should have never left the factory that way. What we're gonna do? Take pictures of everything. He's like, give me the information. He goes, get an estimate from them which I have emailed. I have already got an estimate for the repair on one side because I thought it was one of our screw-ups. And then when I realized, like, wait a second, this is not our screw-up. This, this is definitely a warranty job. So I contacted the body shop again today. I sent the new pictures. They're going to send me a new estimate. Once I get that new estimate, uh, I will submit it to uh, Numar and they will work. So they say, I'll keep you guys updated. And believe me, I'll let them know I'm keeping you guys updated. They said that, yes, they will... Um, work with the body shop. The body shop confirmed that they already told me, yes, we will work with Numar. So they're going to take care of that. It's probably going to be at least a thousand dollars to fix it. Cause now they got to fix two sides and they're going to have to 
do whatever preventative uh, thing they have to do so that it doesn't happen again. Mm -hmm. So that's the important part. If they follow through, which I, I'm going to make sure they do, if they follow through with it, uh, that, that's going to be a, a big, another big shout out to Newmore um, for taking care of that and not inconveniencing the customer because but, that should have never left the factory no. that way. Ever. Another big shout out to Newmar, like you said, yes, but you want to leave them for four travel. Well, four travel's better. Um, and like Harry said, deep enough pockets, yes. Well, no, we use four travel. Not new. We're not dropping one point two million dollars. I'm talking about like ten years old, like a ten year old one. You know, they're, they're still really nice, but no, we're not. We're not. We're not dropping that kind of money. Maybe Matt will take it on an even trade for a Prevo. <laughs> I don't you don't sell, sell a Prevo? Oh, you sell Thor's. Is he's favorite? No, brand. Matt. I think. What is your highest uh, expense motorhome you guys sell there? Do you guys have Zephyrs, Tiffin Zephyrs? Or, uh, you probably have Cornerstones, um, but do you have the Tiffin Zephyr? Or what's the highest line Tiffin uh, or highest line? Uh, ah, okay. Cap set at six hundred. So I don't even think you guys are at Cornerstones, right? At six hundred. Let us know. Yeah. Now the, the MSRP is like over seven on the mm, Cornerstone. Yeah. So, okay. Well, Matt, I guess we can't get our four travel from you. Sorry. Unless you get a used one. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> It'll change by then. I, we really so, like the Integras too, so they're, they're not out of the mix. Look, I said I would stick with Newmar forever, but well, he this this could be his, this could be make ideas, or break. His... This could be a make or break thing with this here. We'll see. We'll see. All right. So, but it's but it's a, you know it's a Super C and a, and a you know an Integra and then a Dutch Star, which is fine with me because it's a Newmar. Um, we like the yeah, you like Tiffin, Allegro Allegro bus Tiffin is nice. too. So and space. Oh my god, I can't keep up with it. So moral of the story is that if Aspire you Aspire is the highest in tech. No Cornerstone. No Cornerstone is the highest. Yeah. Cornerstone, I, Matt, is the highest. Sorry, maybe it's the highest you guys sell, but Cornerstone is the top. Yeah, maybe he means what they sell. The top notch for Integra. I'm waiting to get one, <laughs> but you don't need to because you said they let you drive whatever. Right when you go places, you could take theirs. So moral of the story is if your RV uh, manufacturer gives you a hard time, maybe you have to push a little bit more. Um, yes. And who said assertive. push? Yes. John said, yep. Sometimes so you hopefully they'll push. take care of this. I, I'm actually going to shoot video on this and uh, yeah, we'll you know, do that this talk weekend. about it. I don't know how many people are going to view it, but. Hey, there's always some. Look, I'm sure we're not the only new Marians. Because I'm not repairing suffering. it. They're going to repair no. it. It's definitely under warranty. I'm not getting the spray paint. No, no, no. That's not happening. It's going to be done right. And by the when when you see something like this on our RV, uh, he obsesses. Oh, I freaked out. Obsessed. I'm then we're trying to out. figure out how it happened. Did a rock hit it? Did the, uh, He was free. And it's all he was talking about. All he was talking about. No, because you see, a, a, it's not a scratch. Like, I understand scratches. It's it's a no, chunk it's of a fiberglass yeah, missing. Yeah. I'm like, how did this happen? Like, this is not, this, this is a squirrel, like, nibbling on the sidewalk? <laughs> it's a woodpecker. We really yeah, I'm like, this, this, this is not, this <laughs> shouldn't happen this way. Oh, that, Matt, that aspires the highest you sell. Uh, okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Izzy wants it. Uh, Izzy wants everything. Well, yeah, want nothing, get, want everything, get nothing. <laughs> All right, so are we good? Thank you, everybody, for joining us. So tune in next Thursday. We should have something up. Actually, is the next? Oh, no, next Thursday we are. I think it's the following Thursday. Oh, no, we're probably going to do it from our RV. Yeah, we're going to be taking care of some be dogs. pet sitting. So Fun, fun. Um, yeah. So cool. thanks, everybody. Thanks, One last begging. Thumbs up. Like. Share. Subscribe. If comment. you're new to the channel... <laughs> Please subscribe. We thank everybody you for... Know what, you know what I bought today? What's that? Tell them. I bought a subscribe pillow that for every video and live stream, it's going to sit right here. MJ it's, thinks it's this is going to get us more subscriptions, sub so we'll subliminal see. Subliminal messages. Yes, we'll see. Hey, all the big dogs have it. The All the big the YouTube creators. Hey, it can't hurt. It's a pillow. I can cuddle it. See, Whatever. Harry wants everything, too. Set. So, uh, another fun evening. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Ron. This is so much fun. And... Yes, yeah, I'm the same way. Harry sounds like me. I guess it's a man thing. See, I'm happy with my with my new mar. <laughs> All right. All right. So thanks everyone. Peace out. We are see gonna you on end the it road. here. We'll see you guys on the road. Thanks for joining us. Have a good night, and we will see you guys next week. Oh wait, let me do the little uh, cute exit <laughs> the thing. The outro. Huh? <laughs> Let's see. This is four.